The following program is underwritten in part by Schmidt's Naturals. Smell seriously amazing and support animal conservation with Schmidt's special edition Lily of the Valley natural deodorant. Created in collaboration with the Jane Goodall Institute, 5% of each purchase goes to animals in the wild. Learn more and pick up your stick now at schmitz.com. The following program is also underwritten in part by... My dog Annie recently broke her leg. Thankfully, she's protected by Embrace Pet Insurance. Embrace offers one simple plan for unexpected accidents and illnesses. To learn more, visit EmbracePetInsurance.com. Policies underwritten by a licensed insurer of American Modern Insurance Group. Coverage subject to policy terms and conditions. Celebrating the connection with our pets. This is Animal Radio, featuring veterinarian Dr. Debbie White, groomer Joey Villani, news director Lori Brooks. And now, from the Red Barn Studios, here are your hosts, Hal Abrams and Judy Francis. Welcome. Grab your pet, bring him around the radio. If you have questions for Dr. Debbie or for Joey Villani, the dog father, toll free, 1-866-405-8405. On today's show, we'll be visiting with Mark Beckoff once again. He works over at the, uh, I believe, the University of Colorado. He teaches over there, and he, he's very well-versed with canine behavior. Actually, animal behavior all, all around. Mm-hmm. He's going to tell us how we should unleash our dog. And when I say unleash our dog, I mean that very metaphorically. Yeah, don't just take the leash off yeah, when you're in. That's not what he means. Yeah, you're terrifying me, guys. You know, we're going to have dogs hit yeah. by cars, dog fights, all of that. Yeah. Mm. No, by unleash, he means like letting them roll in worms and all kinds of weird, yucky stuff. And letting them stop and sniff on a walk. Let them stop and smell the roses. I've never seen my dog smell a rose, by the way. (laughs) That's not what my dog's smelling. Mine pee on him, but... (laughs) Well, he's leaving his mark, and, and that's what they like to do out on the walks. It's like, what do we call it, Facebook or Twitter? They're catching up with the news of the day as they take their walk around the block. I always call that getting getting the story of their neighborhood. So uh, Mark Beckoff will explain that a little more coming up in just a few minutes right here on Animal Radio. Also, we will talk to Maribeth Veet. She is a pet transporter. She takes animals from shelters, usually tough situations, to uh, situations where they might find a home. Or she can be hired, too, to do this. You know, if you're moving across the country, she'll move your dog across the country. And she lucked out. I think uh, I think she was in a, like real estate, and I think in yeah real estate. And in the late two thousands, of course, the real estate market bottomed out, and fate intervened, and she ended up transporting pets across the country. We'll find out a little bit about her story coming up. But now we want to know about your story. We'll go to the phones one eight six six four zero five eight four zero five. Hey, Randy, how you doing? I'm good, thank you. Where are you calling from today? Uh, Indiana. Indiana. Where? Because that's uh, Dr. Debbie's uh, stomping grounds. That's where she's... Terre Haute. Okay. Yeah. All right. I come from the Hammond area, Hammond, Munster, Indiana. Oh. So. Yeah, you're straight north of us. Yeah. yeah. Well, what can I do for you today? Well, the issue that I have is I've got an eight-year-old Labrador, and I had three dogs about a year and a half ago, and two of them have died, and they were her, like, constant companions. And... Um, now, like when I leave my house, she stays in and um, she gets, she'll have anxiety attacks or something because she literally almost chewed through one of my walls trying mm-hmm. to get out of the direction that I go. I go through a utility room and, you know, it. many times she doesn't do anything. Other times, I mean, she'll literally try and chew through the wall. So I put up, you know, kind of a barrier. Um but she'll lay by that door, and, you know, I've got a 2 by 12 sitting there in front of that door now, and she'll chew on that. Oh, my goodness. Oh, And I and I just don't know what to do about her, you know, separation anxiety. Yeah. So did she ever do any part of this before the other dogs were gone? Was she ever real anxious like this? Never. Okay. Never. I could uh, leave her in the house. All three of the dogs, I could leave them in the house for 24 hours, and I'd come home, they'd be in the same spot. Okay, yeah. And, and so separation anxiety is different than, you know, dogs that are just um, anxious or nervous um, when they see their owners leave. So separa- it, separation anxiety rises to a whole new level, and, and it usually does occur when we have a lot of vocalizing, um, destructive behaviors. We can have problems with... Um, uh, urinating, defecating in the house. Um, so that's um, kind of fits more of the clinical picture of 
what rises to separation anxiety. So it, okay. it's some dogs, it can happen in dogs that are kind of a little high anxiety normally, um, but it also can be triggered by different kind of stressful events. So changes in the household, a kid goes to college, you know, loss of the housemates. Um, I see it sometimes more in older pets as they start to have some of their senses declining. Um, so there's a lot of things that can kind of trigger this. So um, the challenge is, is that um, there's there's a behavioral component that we have to address with training, and there's other things that we can do environmentally as well as even medications to, to help her with this. Um, the, the challenge is it's not a quick fix, so it does take patience, and it, it does take, um, you know, utilizing um, kind of a, a training regimen to try to help her cope with this. So the, the basic big things that I look at is, you know, we try to teach basically independence um, to a dog with separation anxiety. So that basically means that we're going to do a structured program where we're going to reward her for calm, quiet behaviors when you're around uh, without you doing anything and giving her necessarily attention for that. So um, so kind of the examples that I like to give is I like to teach a place command or a settle command. When you go to a pillow, you go here or there. And she gets rewarded for lying there in a calm, quiet manner without whining, crying, carrying on, or trying to, like, seek seek out you. Now, some dogs don't do that, and they'll carry on and cry. But if you get a quiet window of, say, 10 seconds, then I give a treat reward. When I'm around, it, she never has that issue. Good. So that's it, great. I mean, so... She's not so, a problem whatsoever if I'm home. Good. So what we're going to push her to do is to try to learn increasing distance away from you. So if she can do this with, you know, without a fail with you around, then we're going to ask you to kind of do it and leave the room or get across a far distance where she might start to have some anxiety about sensing that you're leaving the room. And then, again, we kind of only go as far as she's comfortable and we reward her for that quiet, calm behavior. That may mean you go to your bedroom um, and, you know, come back, and as long as she's quiet and calm, you give her a reward. Now, there are food dispensing treat um, items, and the name of those fails me, so I don't know if Judy or Hal, you remember what the name of that is, but there's this little kind of a unit that you can put next to, say, her pillow or her bed, and it has a remote control that you can press the plunger and reward her without having to run all the way back to where she's at. Um, and that's a great way to teach this kind of subtle command. Um, mm-hmm. And then you kind of work up to like, you know, going out into the garage, shutting the door. And then if she's still holding that quiet, calm place, then you get, you give her a reward. Um, that's teaching independence away from you. The other thing is that if she's ever anxious, carrying on, whining, crying, and as you're kind of getting ready to leave, we don't want to reward her. We don't want to do things like uh, make a lot of eye contact or tell her, it's okay, baby, you're, it, daddy will be back soon, don't worry about it. All of those uh-huh. things are soothing and reinforcing that unwanted behavior. So it makes us feel better, but it doesn't really help the dog. They're, they're getting some attention for um, you know an unwanted behavior. So we, we want to just watch how we respond to that. So no eye contact, no talking to her. Um, and really changing the routine when you are leaving the home. So what I usually try to tell people is 30 minutes before you go, we're going to change up everything. So for women, you know, we grab our purse, (laughs) grab our coat and our keys. Dogs pick up on those cues. And that's actually becomes the trigger for some of this anxiety to start amping up. So that may mean an hour before you leave, you grab your wallet, your keys, you put it in a different place. And then you go sit down and you finish watching TV or eating your breakfast. And then you mix it up and you move it around so she's not going to learn those same cues at every time you leave the house. So if you can leave out another door, that's a great thing to try as well, just so that we don't always have the same exit door that you're looking at. But it takes a lot of time. And I do find some dogs that, especially if you're in that destructive phase, um, it does help quite a bit to get some help um, from a veterinary professional and some anti-anxiety medicine. So there are some uh, approved medications that we can use for dogs with separation anxiety. And I would definitely say you may be in that situation where you need to have a little bit of help as you're trying to train her with us. I see. Um, okay. Yeah. And I like how you've created that the safest environment you can. Um, so a lot of people will say, oh, you know, I'll crate my dog. Um, and there are some dogs that if they have separation anxiety and you crate them, they actually get worse. So we kind of right. have to deal like with the individual pet. But make the environment as safe as you can. Take away things that will be a danger if she destroys them um, or um, the home, you know, obviously. 
And mm-hmm. then, um, and then there's other types of things that we can get into as far as uh, enrichment toys, pheromones. There's a lot of those kind of things that I'll use to assist in a dog with this. Um, and in many cases, hey, you know, there's if you have doggy daycare in your area, that's one thing to consider. Mm-hmm. Um, and some dogs actually do do better if we add another pet into the household, whether it be a dog or a cat or, you know, whatever. Um, so um, it may be something to consider if you've got room in your home and your heart for another um, another furry one. I might have, but I don't think my wife does. Oh. <laughs> uh, uh, but, having three dogs we're down to one and she's like no more dogs please so. yeah I, I hear that around my household too you're not alone on that one uh, uh, randy thank you so much for calling good luck on that let us know how it works out if you need to follow up later on down the road give us a call back toll free at one 405 Well, this portion of Animal Radio is underwritten in part by Schmitz Naturals. Smell seriously amazing and support animal conservation with Schmitz Special Edition Lily of the Valley Natural Deodorant. Created in collaboration with the Jane Goodall Institute, 5% of each purchase supports animals in the wild. It's available now at Whole Foods Markets and Schmitz.com. And thank you so much, Schmitz, for underwriting Animal Radio. You're listening to Animal Radio. Phones are open at 1-866-405-8405. And now an Animal Radio News Brief. I'm Stacy Cohen for Animal Radio. A woman in Italy says her dog has learned how to navigate the city bus routes in Genoa all by himself. The owner told the local that 12-year-old Camillo has been riding the bus since he was a puppy. Now he spends his days riding around town and getting off at the stops where he knows he'll find a treat. Camillo's owners say the pooch is always taking the bus to a local poultry shop. That's where he gets a few handouts, and then he comes home by the end of the day. Animal behavior expert Luigi Bottini explains that Camillo isn't really plotting out his bus routes, but instead he's using familiar smells and sights to figure out when to get on and off the bus. Camilla's owner says she's ordered a camera for his collar so she can see exactly what the four-legged traveler does on his adventures. She also should send him with a list so he can get a whole chicken and bring it home instead of just, you know, a piece here and there. This has been an Animal Radio News Brief. Get more at animalradio.pet. Need a fix of the good stuff? Get more Animal Radio with the free Animal Radio app for iPhone and Android. Hey, folks, this is Jackson Galaxy. You're listening to Animal Radio. Please do everyone a favor, spay or neuter your animals today. Nature at its best is nature at its simplest. At Red Barn, we've kept it simple for 20 years by concentrating on single-ingredient natural dog treats. Because Mother Nature's actually pretty good at this. Bones are just tasty bones. Meat treats are just nourishing meat. It's nature at its simplest. Look at the label. We want you to. Red Barn Natural Treats. Simply the best. Find it in your local pet specialty store. Try our slow-roasted, natural, meaty bones. You're listening to Animal Radio. Phones are open at 1-866-405-8405. You know, we've had a lot of guests on Animal Radio, but my favorite part is still talking to you. The number is 1-866-405-8405. Just to check in if you want to say, hey, tell us about your pet, who your furry family member is, or if they're having a problem to talk to Dr. Debbie, or if it's a grooming problem, our very svelte, Joey Volani, the dog father. 1-866-405-8405. What are you working on, Lori? Speaking of that svelte, Joey, there are some new swimming trunks for dogs. And don't even don't even start right now because I, I know I can see your mouths like hanging on the floor. But I, I, I just want to bring up the idea and, and get your feeling about it, especially Joey and his new hot bod. That's on the way. one 405 8405 Oh, don't forget you can also ask your questions from the free Animal Radio app for iPhone, Android, and BlackBerry. Well, good afternoon, Heather. How are you? I'm doing well, thank you. I'm so pleased to get your call. Where are you calling from? Arroyo Grande, California. Boy, we're getting lots of calls right around this area. You must be listening on KVEC. You bet. And you know, it's a great station, and they've just undergone some changes, and I'm so excited that they've kept the best of the best. So there there you go. There you go. I think we've actually been on this station, I think, at least a decade now. So we're very happy to be a part of KVEC. So what's going on? How can we help you? I have the whole team here for you. Oh, 
terrific. We need a whole team. <laughs> so it's a household with my daughter and I, and I have had two chihuahuas. One is four and one is three. It's mama and baby. I mean, literally. And then we okay. have several cats, and the cats aren't the issue. It's we brought in a new rescue border terrier puppy, and he got along great with the chihuahuas until he got bigger than them. And then <laughs> now they're, you know, and they played and they cleaned each other and did their ears and all that stuff, and it was really great fun. But all of a sudden he got more, I don't say aggressive, but assertive in his play style. Okay. So they now um, turn the other way and leave the room when they see him coming in. Okay. And we try, you know, we give him treats and we give him all love and all that stuff. And we just need to know if it's a puppy stage or something we should do to control his aggressiveness with the play style, which they do not appreciate. Okay, now you see aggressiveness, so I just need a little clarification. So meaning he's rambunctious, like his uh, he kind of bounds on them, leaps on them, and it's something they don't appreciate, or is it actually gotten to bites and growls and no, something more like that? No, I would say what you said the first, the first okay. part. Okay. It's just too rough a play for them. And they okay. are neutered females, and he's a neutered male, and he's probably going on four or five months now. Well, yeah. You got two different demographics going on. You've got the adolescent boy right now. Okay, we put this in kid terms. We got the adolescent boy, and you've and you've got the twenty year old uh, college age girls. So, okay. do they want to hang out and play a lot together in the human world? Maybe some, but maybe their level of interaction yeah. together is going to be limited, and it isn't always realistic to expect those two different um, communities, if you will, to to get along okay. and to play and to interact in the same manner so you know yes the trick is to try to figure out some common ground and that might mean a couple things that might mean that we work on rewarding the patience of the gals and then we work on expending this boyish energy that he has then then hopefully we can find some common ground but I don't I don't think the goal right now that you should be focused on is to try to get them to lay next to each other in the same room and no. say oh all is nice no. nice because that might just be a bit unrealistic for his age and his exuberance yeah. that he has and being of a border terrier I mean they are a go 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 so um, terriers are all about doing sniffing getting into things and that just might be a bit more than than the girls want to have happen so um, I do like the idea of treats and rewards but I would treat and reward the girls when he's around so just the fact that he's around maybe interacting in the same room, that's a great reason to give them a treat. I wouldn't just give them a treat for no good reason. I would make sure okay. we try to pair that physical presence of the other dog with um, something good comes to them, whether it's a special treat, some special love, um, you know, whatever it might be that your, your dogs enjoy. But I really think the big thing is for this, this young fella is to, to get him worn out. And that might mean finding some activity that is good for him to just kind of burn that energy down, whether that's going to... Um, um, a play group, like a puppy kindergarten class, um, a, um, a doggy, uh, uh, doggy daycare, pl uh, I said play groups, um, taking him out for long, extensive walks, playing ball. Um, some little terriers excel at things like fly ball, which is kind of a retrieving um, game with, uh, with balls where they have to do a relay race, and that could be a great thing as well. So okay. something that, to give him some physical activity and stimulation so that when you do have them all together, you, you can kind of expect hopefully the interaction will be a little bit more in a subdued level for him. Oh, exactly, and I think, uh, I think we're both on the same track, so thank you very much for that. Um, he started... Great. Um, daycare a couple of days a week just today. Awesome. And, Good. Um, anyway, so I think, okay, so just kind of try to tire him out. <laughs> It, yeah, exactly. And, you know, in, in recognizing when his behavior starts to kind of amp up and if yeah. that means kind of interjecting yourself into the equation, you see that he kind of gets that some puppies get kind of a crazy puppy <laughs> look around where they yeah. look like they're just going to. It's kind of like, kind of like a, it's on the hunt kind of, which is, it just is natural. You know, it's like, okay, calm down. You know, so he just gets him to overwhelm like a little kid at bedtime. You know, he just gets you that got it. wind. So I'm glad it's but all it's innocent and it's playful because that is totally workable and I would see that these guys are going to you know be pals down the road but yeah he's just kind of that annoying little brother right now 
I appreciate it. Okay, well, thank you so much. Thank you for listening, Heather. We appreciate it. Well, this portion of Animal Radio is underwritten by Embrace Pet Insurance, providing nose to tail accident and illness coverage for your dog or cat. It can be customized to fit your budget needs. Simply take your dog or cat to any vet, submit a claim form, and get reimbursed quickly. You can learn more at EmbracePetInsurance.com to get a quote. And thank you, Embrace, for underwriting Animal Radio. Check out Animal Radio highlights. All the good stuff without the blah, blah, blah. Browse on over to animalradio.pet. Do you travel with your dog? Of course. My pets are part of our family. Me too. I take Daisy with me everywhere. Right, Daisy? So how do you find out what hotels welcome your dog? I read Fido Friendly, the travel and lifestyle magazine for you and your dog. Sounds perfect for planning our next vacation. Right, Daisy? It is. Their motto is leave no dog behind. And they have great hotel and destination reviews. Where can I find the magazine? Go online to FidoFriendly.com. I will for sure. Come on, Daisy. We're off to find our next adventure. This is an Animal Radio News Update. I'm Lori Brooks. Well, apparently many people claim their pet is an emotional support animal in order to get out of uh, paying certain deposits when moving into a new rental home. I always just, you know, we talk a lot about emotional support pets on airplanes and, you know, the havoc that they can cause there. But now in Florida, State Senator Manny Diaz is actually working with the Florida Apartments Association, and he has spearheaded a bill there that aims to crack down on those who falsely call their pets emotional support animals. This uh, would require Floridians to have a certificate signed by a licensed doctor to prove that their pet is indeed for emotional support. I don't know about you guys, but... um, Most emotional support animals that are on planes these days have those uh, certificates from their doctors or a letter from their doctor. And I don't think the doctor is really qualified to say that this is an emotional support pet. doesn't really have a lot to do with it. But under this proposed law, it would be a misdemeanor for misrepresenting your pet as an emotional support animal. And those who break that law and lie about their pet status could be fined up to $500 and get possible jail time. So this is the very beginning stages of this. The bill just passed through its first committee, so it's still alive in the Florida State Senate. And it still has a couple of more committee hearings before it hits the Senate floor and a vote. But we, of course, will keep you posted. And if you haven't discovered this yet for yourself, let me tell you, there are now dog swimming trunks or shorts. (laughs) So if you are the proud owner of a male dog, I was thrilled to see this. Some other people I've seen articles on this where they're like, what the heck? And why does a, a dog who prefers to be naked anyway, why would they want shorts? But they're made by a company called Cove. Uh, That's Cove with a K, which uh, specializes in recycled plastic garments. I have to stop here and tell you that I did find these shorts on Amazon by this company. And um, I had to write a little note. I had to find out how I could leave a a little note for whoever posted uh, these swim trunks because every single ad for them, and there were several, had the word recycled misspelled. Oh. So if you can get past, yeah, if you can get past that, which was hard for me, uh, but they say each pair of swim trunks is made out of eight plastic bottles and a little bit of spandex thrown in there so they get some stretch to them. They have, you know, they're made for a dog, so they have a, like adjustable sides and a, a place for, um, you know, their peeing apparatus down there peeing Um, apparatus yeah (laughs) but uh, apparently if you if if you're not sold on these shorts yet they're quick drying material uh this recycled plastic material and and guys there is more and hal i thought about you but you're really a cat guy so i i have to go to joey um for guys like joey the company also makes men's swimsuits out of identical fabric so you guys can have matching trunks. Oh, my gosh. Wow. And Joey with his new beach body. How cool is that? There you go. <laughs> me me and, um, and, and Simon. How about for Gurney? Can I get one for the bird? <laughs> That's probably next. So how many of these did you order? <laughs> I, I didn't yet, but I thought it's, it's, it was a really cute idea. But I still have truly not passed the, the recycled well, they're probably, uh, spelling in every, every posting. They're probably foreign. 
They're, they might be from China because, you know, we used to ship China all of our plastic for them to recycle. That's right. Yeah. I, I don't know. Truthfully, on, on this one ad for the dog shorts, there was only one sold. And you can tell, you know, at a five-star review, and you could tell that it was done by, you know, the the guy who's who's selling them. But sure. I, I might invest. In fact, I'm hoping that he says, hey, Lori. Thank you for pointing out that recycle was misspelled eight times. Here's a free pair of shorts. <laughs> <laughs> a free pair of shorts for diesel. I, I'd have to get my own. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God bless you. I'm Lori Brooks. Get more breaking animal news anytime at AnimalRadio.com. This has been an Animal Radio News Update. Get more at AnimalRadio.com. Live at the Red Barn Studios, you're listening to Animal Radio. Here's Hal and Judy. It's Animal Radio celebrating the connection with our pets. And if we're lucky enough to work with our pets, that's great. If we're lucky enough to combine pets within the job that we have, even better. For Dr. Debbie, she she always kind of had a sciencey thing going on, but she loved animals, so being able to combine them and work as a veterinarian is something very unique for her. I would say you're you're happy. You're I, probably one of the happiest I, people I know. Well, I'm I'm doing exactly what I was meant to do and what I've always dreamt of. So I'm very lucky. It would really stink if I was made to do like insurance because I really don't like that kind of detail work. Um, so thank goodness animals were my calling. For me, it was radio and animals and creating animal, animal radio, radio with that. Mm-hmm. Our next guest, Maribeth Veet, she has two strong impulses in her life also. Wanderlust. She likes to travel. And she loves animals. And almost by accident, she invented the perfect profession for herself. She is a pet transporter, and she joins us now. Hi, Maribeth. How are you doing? Hi. How are you? Very, very good. Where do you call home? South Carolina. South Carolina. Well, tell us Mm -hmm. a little bit how you uh, accidentally happened upon pet transporting. It's kind of a long story, so I'll, I'll... Um, kind of summarize it, but I was heading to work one morning and decided to take another route, a shorter route, and up ahead, I saw this puppy sitting in the, standing in the middle of the street, so I pulled over and picked him up and went to the nearest house, and there was a, about five more puppies on the porch. They were about three months old, and this man came out, and after I talked to him for about 10 minutes... He allowed me to come back and get those puppies. And my sister in Denver wanted one of them. So a couple months later, I didn't want to fly the puppy, so I drove. And when I arrived, I told her, I said, I I think I can do this as a business. I think because I love to drive and I've always loved animals. Does it pay the bills? It does. You've moved, what, about 100 pets so far? I would say 100 probably more. You know, I have a lot of referrals. Um, I have, you know, people that like are are involved in rescues. Sometimes I do those relocations. Um, People that are, the the last job I did was a couple that were moving from Maryland to Oceanside. Um, And I I took their three cats. Do you ever grow attached to the pets? Yes. (laughs) Yes. Yes. Many times. Many times. I just, and, and, you know, sometimes if it's, say, let's say it's an adoption or um, someone purchased a puppy, <clears throat> sometimes, you know, I don't know where these animals are going. And so sometimes I have a apprehension because I've grown so attached to them. And then, you know, 99% of the time I'm very, very happy when I get them to their destination because the people are you know, warm and loving and love their pet and all that. But but there has been a couple occasions where I've just wished I could just drive off with that animal in my car (laughs) and and keep it. I understand that. So I bet that you've um, had uh, doing this. I'm sure you've got a lot of stories. Who is your worst uh, four-legged passenger? I guess if worse could be annoying, it was one cat, and he was super sweet. And his name was Traveler. <laughs> he was, a, yeah, I swear, his name was Traveler. And he was a rescue from Clarksville, Georgia, to uh, outside of Richmond, Virginia. 
a lady had adopted him. And that cat meowed the <laughs> entire time I was driving. <laughs> and it was just like, you know, I mean, I turned the music on. I talked to him. I did all the things that I normally do. Uh-huh. Because, of course, they're going to meow initially. They do. They always do. A few minutes. 10 minutes, but this cat, the only time that that cat stopped meowing was when I stopped my car, (laughs) like at a rest area or whatever. He'd stop, and I was like, okay, you need your name change because (laughs) that's not a good name for you. (laughs) But but he was sweet, and, you know, really, that's my only, um, you know, annoying. I have a really good rapport with animals, and I think... For the most part, they sense that. It sounds very interesting what you do, and I thank you so much for spending time with us today and telling us about it. Well, thank you so much. I really appreciate your, you know, interest in what I do because it, it, it is a, a very unique job, and, um, you know, I'm, I'm glad I, I didn't really invent it, but I'm glad I kind of came across it when I did because I, I really love it. I've seen... So many parts of the country that I'm I'm pretty positive I would have never seen. Thank you so much. And uh, I know you listen to a lot of podcasts as you go across the country. Don't forget, Animal Radio is on a podcast, too. You can listen live streaming. And the animals will love it. We're going to head back to the phones next. Toll free, 1-866-405-8405. This portion of Animal Radio is underwritten by Kensington Books. Inspired by true stories of cats who've been caught stealing from their humans. You heard me right. It's The Secret Life of Mac by Melinda Metz. It's a hilarious and heartwarming novel about an adorable klepto kitty with a passion for thievery and a sideline in helping the humans in his life find the love they deserve. The Secret Life of Mac by Melinda Metz is available everywhere books are sold. And you can learn more at kensingtonbooks.com. Thank you, Kensington, for underwriting Animal Radio. If you've ever shared your home and heart with a charmingly naughty animal who's always up to mischief, you'll fall in love with MacGyver, the matchmaking klepto kitty in The Secret Life of Mac by Melinda Metz. Hilarious and heartwarming, this possum romantic comedy will have you laughing out loud as Mac, the thieving tabby, steals your heart. The Secret Life of Mac by Melinda Metz is on sale now everywhere books are sold. Visit kensingtonbooks.com for more info. You're listening to Animal Radio. If you missed any part of today's show, visit us at animalradio.com or download the Animal Radio app for iPhone and Android. Joey, first I must apologize to you. Last week you insisted we put up a new picture at the website of you because, you know, I see you every week, so it's... I don't really notice changes, but I looked at the two pictures, and holy moly, you look like a different person. You know what I feel like, and I appreciate it. That's if you're saying something good. I don't yeah, know if you're saying I... something. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just assuming. How much have you lost since that picture? Do you know what's funny? When, when I gave you, when I first came to Animal Radio and I gave you that picture, you know, here I am thinking, you know, I look pretty um, stealth in that picture. And then you look at it now, you're like, oh, my God. The great pumpkin, Charlie Brown, you know, it's wow. Um, but um, can I say I, you I, you looked more but, scary when you first came to Animal Radio than you do now? Well, I didn't think I was here to scare anyone. So, you know, what can I tell you? So what what is the total <laughs> amount? I'm still waiting to hear. Um, it's, it's, you know what? I, I lost count, but um, somewhere so it's it's over a hundred. Let's put it that way. Wow! Wow! So, you know that's five years. That's been a, a a just about five years. So it's mm. not like, you know, you, you drop a lot and then you yo yo back up a little and you drop you yo go yo yo you, you know, start with Weight Watchers. You go to keto. You do this. So what's worked that. for it's, you? What has been the most effective for well, you? Well, Weight Watchers definitely was the most effective. Um, and then I stopped counting points and stopped going to the meetings. And you can't do that. And then for me, it's um, I'm a junkie. Bottom line, that's what it comes down to, a food junkie. <laughs> so I have to go extreme. So right now I started with a, um, a keto-type diet, which is working really, really well for me. 
But I know it's going to come to a bottom at some point where, you know, the day comes where I have a slice of pizza and, and I'm going to be back on the streets, you know, <laughs> um, you know, sitting on the corners with, with pizza all around me. What does uh, keto diet include? Is that like pork rinds? I don't know. I don't eat like that, but no. yeah, it does. Um, okay. You know, I'm mainly poultry, fish, um, healthy oils, avocados, vegetables, that sort of thing. But you can, but again, you know, I mean, you, you're going to be what you eat. So the problem is, 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 is I don't, I don't, I don't want to be putting junk in me at this point. I feel good. Well, you know what? And your coat looks great. My I coat mean, looks your, good. Your coat I? and yes. hair just, yeah. Yes. <laughs> so what's on the docket today? Okay, so Pam Cruz. Um, good old Pam Cruz. Her name because yes. she, um, she is actually emailed me um a few times on a few things so. she's a stalker but, isn't she she's yeah. stalking you because she does email Pam you a Cruz lot is a stalker i think yes yeah. yes okay. um you know um but um I, you know we i only know her through you know she's like a pen pal i only okay. know her through um text um and, and <laughs> but I'm she's watching you emails. now <laughs> but she has apparently she has a few cats and um she listens to the show and she's heard me talk about you know, different situations where I use the, the two-bucket system to bathe the cats. Well, it doesn't seem to work good for her. Um, she said she did just, you know, the cats go crazy. It's not working out. Um, so she tried the cornstarch. Um, she said it, they visually look cleaner, but the smell. And as we know, cat urine sometimes, especially male cats, can wow. be a little overpowering. Uh -huh. Now, I haven't, you know, it's funny because I groom cats, but I haven't had a cat in, in, in quite some time. We used to have, growing up, I had a bunch of them. So this is what you can do. Um, it's, it's super easy. White vinegar. Nothing, you know, when I was putting out Joey Vani pet products, and it's a little story that goes along with this. When I was putting that out, and we were putting um, a um, an odor eliminator together because that seemed to be what, you know, the general public was looking for more than anything else. And um, the, the chemist said, you know, Joe, you know, nothing works better than white vinegar and water. And I kind of knew that on pets' coats. Um, in this situation, this is what you're going to do: is you're going to mix a. Um, if you get a quart size spray bottle, um, then you only need a sixteenth um, of a cup of white vinegar, and fill the rest with. If you got distilled water, works best um, because it's not going to leave any staining, any minerals behind on the, on the cat. And add, when I say one drop, I literally mean one drop of dish detergent. Now, the reason why I put the dish detergent in there is because the product needs something to hold on to. Because otherwise, you spray it on, and it just runs right off. If you put a drop of some type of soap in there, it's going to hold on to the coat. So, mist the cat, okay? Or you could sponge it on if your cat doesn't like the, um, the, the, the sound of the sprayer. Um, and especially the areas that, that um, smell real bad. And then don't saturate, just mist. Sprinkle it with the cornstarch again because what the cornstarch is going to do, it's going to pull out the dirt and oils. The um, vinegar spray is going to take out the odor. You're going to brush it through. When the cat's completely dry, brush it through again. If you put a towel down, it'll work best because it won't make a mess. And you should have a clean kitty that has no odor to her at all. And you could do the same thing for dogs too. Now, will my cat smell like vinegar? No, you know what? The vinegar dissipates. Um, you know, a lot of, it's, that's a good question, actually, because a lot of people have asked that question. But usually when it dries completely and it's brushed through, no. Um, you shouldn't smell anything except for what your cat naturally smells like. But you can do the same thing now on dogs or geriatric pets, um, you know, pets that for some reason, um, you know, have a hard time getting up. Maybe they lay in their urine or they just don't smell good. Um, vinegar is going to take out most of the odors. Okay. And did you end up remarketing the vinegar and water under the Joey Volani brand name? No, you know what? We just I I I'm gonna be honest with you, um the whole product line thing, you know, it was like a phase. I was on Animal Planet, figure you make a ton of money. And to be quite honest with you, it was easier to stay away from it and do what I know best and that's just grooming pets and teaching. So mm. I stick with that now. Awesome. Okay, so if you want to talk to Joey, what he does best, one eight six six four zero five eight four zero five right now. This portion of Animal Radio is underwritten by Kensington Books. Cozy up with your furry friend and a great read. Something worth saving by Sandy Ward is a wonderfully touching and surprisingly funny story of a fiercely loyal cat named Lily and the unbreakable bond she shares with her human. Clever and observant, Lily knows that you don't have to be the biggest or the strongest to fight for the ones you love. You can find something worth saving everywhere books are sold and learn more at sandywardbooks.com. Thank you, Kensington, for underwriting Animal Radio. 
People say less is more. At Red Barn, we think less is better. It's what you won't find that sets our natural premium pet food apart. No byproducts, no corn or soy, no fillers. Just the natural ingredients your pets need to live the healthy life they deserve. Look at the label. We want you to. Red Barn Naturals Pet Food. Simply the best. Find it in your local pet specialty store. Try our grain-free rolled food. It's protein-packed with less risk of food sensitivity. Celebrating the connection with our pets, this is Animal Radio, featuring veterinarian Dr. Debbie White, groomer Joey Villani, news director Lori Brooks. And now, from the Red Barn Studios, here are your hosts, Hal Abrams and Judy Francis. You know, when I look down at Ladybug, the studio stunt dog, and you, Judy, I see just a... She looks like she just loves you so much. <laughs> you can just see it in her eyes. And really, she she just every move you make, she's so attentive to you. Uh huh. We're really close. We're a really bonded pair. I, you know, I look at her and I just cannot believe I found her and she's in my life. Yeah. She's going to be eleven. Really? Yes. Wow. wow. I know. She looks so much younger. She does. She, she's... Does she have any surgery or any facelift or does she do, use Grecian formula or anything? Because she really does not look 11. She looks <laughs> about seven. Yeah. She's just, you know, natural. I don't, you know, cover her gray yet or anything. So this is just her in her, her natural form. Yeah. Do you think she really loves you? Yes. Why do you ask? Oh, look, look at, at her. her. Yes. Yeah. Well, I'm just yeah. wondering. You also feed her, right? You're the, you're, I'm going to say the purse strings or the right. food, the refrigerator strings. But you know, she's on a pretty regular schedule and she doesn't just come around when it's dinner time. She's there with me all the time. I don't think You don't she, think she's always thinking about food? <laughs> Gosh. I guess what I'm trying to get at here is, <laughs> is it really that she loves you or is it that she knows that if she plays you, if she does certain things, you will give her food and treats? No, she loves me. Oh, Okay. Okay. You never bite the hand that feeds you. Mm-hmm. Dogs yeah. know that. She's yeah. she's always with me. She doesn't care if I feed her right at that moment or not. Yeah. Fiesel is exactly the same way, you guys. Yeah. Look at I mean, I feed him four times a day. That's my point. That's that's my yeah. point. He he he's I, he's got I your know. number. But you know, I, I'm like Judy. I love him and I um gosh, I almost sound desperate, don't I? I don't mean it that way. I I look at him and um as I have many dogs in my life, and just saying, you are the cutest thing in the world. I, I could not love you anymore. I know. Your heart just swells when you look right. at them. It's mm. just... Okay. Well, I still think that it's something that they've been trained to do. To, <laughs> to they, They've been trained to love you. No. Is what I'm, they, or make it look like they love you. I'm going to ask Mark Beckoff. He will be joining us. He's a uh, very well-known um, behaviorist, animal behaviorist. He studies animals. Good guest. Yes, he is. Good. And this is, I believe he's, he's been on a couple of times before. Yeah, and I want to get to the bottom of this, Hal. I want to prove you wrong. I'm going to ask I think him. he baited us on this, Judy. Yeah. I think I did. <laughs> <laughs> if you've ever wondered if your animal really loves you or not, we'll talk to Mark Beckoff in just a few minutes right here on Animal Radio. Lori, what are you working on over there in the newsroom? I'm so excited. Big award. Big, big, big award for Sully. Sully. President George H.W. Bush's former service dog before he passed away. It's a huge award. And uh, I'll update you on that story and and what he's doing now. I cannot wait. I'm glad Sully's uh, still around with us. He is. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Eeny, meeny, miny, mo. My mother says we should go to this phone line here. Is it Vel? Uh, Yes, Vel is here. How are you doing today? I'm pretty good, thank you, Doc. How can we help you? Uh, yes, um, I have uh, I have a problem with one uh, with one of my cats. Uh, uh, I have two cats. One of them is three years old. Uh, uh, she male. Uh, we got her three years ago uh, as a little kitty, and approximately in the seven or eight months after that, we got another cat. Uh, we okay. adopted the, the, the other one, and. Uh, since then, this, uh, uh, we, uh, when we brought the other cat, it, it was a confrontation. It's still on. Okay, but okay, recently, you, didn't, brought, well, you didn't mention what kind of kitty is male or female is the second one. Yeah, uh, the and second one is the male. Is the male, and it's a uh, Siamese. But we, uh, we, ad- we adopt uh, we adopt him in a, uh, one of the pet shops, and okay. uh, so confrontation is still on. But recently, approximately. Start maybe a half of a year ago, 
the female cat, her name is Katya, and she start to uh, be uh, or on on the, uh, my clothes sometimes uh, in the corner, and it's getting worse and worse. And I realize that there is a possibility maybe she's jealous or something. But I, and I'll try to pay more attention to her to give her more treats or to spend more time with her, like to play with her. But it doesn't get doesn't get better. And um, okay. I don't know what to do because sometimes you can't, you came home, home in the evening, and I, I feel smell, and I start to looking around, and I think, and, and I found out in the, another spot, you know. And okay. usually she marks she marks uh, my clothes or the uh, place I see, like in the office, or once she just sneak to the bedroom and she uh, pee on my uh, on my part of the bed. Okay. And so does the male cat have any kind of behavioral problems? Is he doing anything abnormal out of the litter box? Not at all. Not at all. And he's very he's very adorable. He's uh, he's not aggressive like a friend of mine uh, told me that uh, sometimes Siamis are aggressive and uh, they they don't come along uh, they don't get along with with other uh, with other animals, but he's very adorable. He's very friendly. Never okay. had a problem with him and he's yeah. Okay, and then uh, tell me about the cat's environment. Do these kitties go inside, or do they go outside, or are they indoor only? They are only indoor. Okay, and uh, what kind of uh, litter box situation do you have for these kids? It's a, it's a one big one. It's the one plastic, uh, extra large. Okay, is there a cover on top of it, or is it a, a, an open one? Yes, it is. It is covered. It is okay. I mentioned the situation in the Petco, and they recommend me to uh, to get another box. I, I haven't purchased another box because I, I have a limited space in my place. So I put, okay. I put I put like a box, just a simple box, and it put a little a little there. It didn't work. Okay. And how do the two kitties get along? She's do they good. fight? Are they pretty playful? Do you have problems where they'll hiss at each other? Sometimes we they play, but this play uh, th this game uh, become aggressive from uh, my female cat. She um, she let him play she, she let him play with her for for a short period of time. Then then, this, then she start to play aggressively, like she she's basically attacking him. All right, well let's get to the bottom of this here, Val. Um, and I'm going to have to agree, first and foremost, with the Petco um, recommendation. When we have two cats in the household and one litter pan, there's always kind of a, a, um, an unconscious, quiet strife, uh, kind of a fight that the cats can have over that resource. And, and that may not be a problem in the average cat household. But if there is a little interpersonal problem, then we're going to see a problem manifested. And very commonly, it'll be in house soiling accidents. So before we go down that whole behavior road, I guess I should back up and say, anytime I have a cat that is urinating out of the litter box, I always, always, always want to get a veterinary examination and at the very minimum get a urine sample. And I know a lot of people say, oh, I know it's behavioral. We don't. And there's such an overlap between medical problems and behavioral problems that in many cases they blur and um, we just can't confidently say in those situations, oh, it's just a behavioral problem, don't, don't worry about going to the vet. You don't need to. Um, so that's my first uh, therapy for you is to see the veterinarian and have her urine checked out. We know that there's a lot of possibilities for intercat aggression. So if a cat has a lower urinary tract problem, they can be more aggressive with other cats. If they have arthritis, they have thyroid problems, they may have heightened aggression towards other animals and other behavioral problems in the home. So. Well, let's make sure that kitty is in sound health. So once that is done, and I'm going to hope that's all good, then we're going to work on the resources in the home. And the litter box is the first resource that we've mentioned. We want to add that second box, as painful as it is in your, your household situation. We need to make sure we get another um, litter box. The other recommendation I'm going to have is to take that lid off that litter box and put it away, because many cats find that too oppressive to have that over top of them. And especially if we're worried about another cat that's competing for that resource, that can be a problem. So take the lid away, add that second box, make sure it's, it's a solid litter box that's not going to shake under their footing. And then we talk about maybe trying different litter substrates, different litter surfaces. 
Every cat's a little different. Some really enjoy um, the types of the corn cob litters. Others like the clumping litter. So you have to kind of experiment with that a little bit. And then once we get to that point, I'm going to ask you to add some other resources for the kitties. You mentioned you try to give her some extra attention. That's great. But we also need to give her extra hiding spots. And cats are very vertically oriented. So what they like is they don't want to have a flat bed, even with our bed. They want to go high. So we want to make a little kitty condo or even some of the little window seats that cats can look outside of a window. That's how they feel more comfortable and confident in their world. They go vertically higher. So look for opportunities to give her those opportunities in the home. And that's going to give her a little bit more confidence and an ability to get away from the other guy. And whew, then we can work on all these other issues. And there's so much we can get into in cat psychology here. And then in some cases, we will look at some medication um, for kitties. I don't know that that's going to be the first step for you because there's a lot environmentally that we can really adjust and work with. Mm. And then another final recommendation, I'm a big fan of the natural pheromones. So you can go to your local pet store or veterinary office and pick up a little plug-in that releases scent hormones that have a calming effect. And, and that can help when we have these kind of intercat problems, whether it be house soiling or aggression or what have you. Mm. So I, I've given you a lot of homework, Val. <laughs> I wish you the best of luck with things, and hopefully we can work through your kitty household problems and the house soiling. So my best wishes to you and give your, your kitties a, a hug and a kiss for me. Now there is a formula for litters, doctor. The number of litter pans in a cat household should be one more than the number of cats you have. So in a two-cat household, we really ought to have three litter pans okay. in order to decrease this resource protectionism that they have. Okay, so even uh, even adding a second one may not be the solution. He may, he may uh, need to add a third one there. Very Boy, possible. Cats are so darn territorial, I'll tell you. Well, this portion of Animal Radio is underwritten by the Grain-Free Red Bar Naturals canned food for dogs and cats. It is always made in the USA with natural, functional ingredients to support your pet's optimal health. You can learn more at redbarninc.com. And thank you, Red Barn, for underwriting Animal Radio. You're listening to Animal Radio. Phones are open at 1-866-405-8405. Hi, this is Paul Reiser, and you're listening to Animal Radio. Every minute you're here, you're not harming someone else. I don't know what that means. <laughs> here is today's sub of news story. I'm Nick Miles. The 24th Amelia Island Concord Elegance took place in Florida this month, and as part of the celebrations, there were vehicles made using VW Beetles as the base. The air-cooled Volkswagen chassis has been the base for many years of, of custom cars, more than any other vehicle in the world. In the early days of VW production, the focus was on the sedan. Post-war, convertible versions were next on the list. Outside companies took on the battle to produce a convertible. To see some of them, go to ourautoexpert.com. Our Auto Expert is brought to you by O'Reilly Auto Parts. Think O'Reilly Auto Parts for all your car care needs. Get guaranteed low prices and excellent customer service at O'Reilly Auto Parts. Better parts, better prices, every day. You're listening to Animal Radio. Phones are open at 1-866-405-8405. Live at the Red Barn Studios, here's Hal and Judy. It is Animal Radio celebrating the connection with our pets. We will head back to the phones in just a couple of seconds for Dr. Debbie and Joey Volani. And this portion of Animal Radio is underwritten in part by Critter Cops. Critter Cops. There's a new way to find lost pets, and it's becoming very popular all over the USA. It's Critter Cops. Yeah. You'll get huge media blasts to thousands of people about your lost pet. They also offer specialized services for stolen pets. Try the new way to find a lost pet and increase your chances of a reunion. Visit CritterCops.net. Hi, who is this? Uh, this is Paul. Hi, Paul. How are you doing? I'm great. How are you? Very well. Where are you calling from? Kamii, Idaho. Where is that? Uh, North Central Idaho, kind of in the base of the handle. About 150 miles west of Missoula. Mm. Great. Hey, I've got a fishing trip planned up in your parks in the next month or so. I'm looking forward to it. Come on down. It's beautiful country. It's pristine America, man. It is awesome. You can't beat it. No. So what's going on today? I have a one-year-old miniature schnauzer female, spayed at six months, and when she gets really excited, 
most of the time when I come home, uh, she gets excited for maybe 10, 15 seconds, jumping up and down, excited, daddy's home, blah, 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 and then she kind of plots it. She falls down? She falls down, and then that lasts about 10 or 15 seconds. Now, our vet has uh, diagnosed her with a heart murmur and says that's what's causing it. Mm, okay. Now, I love the little dog. She's just the coolest thing. What can I, I, I know she's got a limited life, but is there anything I might do to uh, minimize the event? Okay. Well, good questions here. And um, as far as beyond her having those episodes where she's kind of falling over and collapsing, does she have any problems coughing, any problems playing? No. You mean after? No, just outside of that. You know, does she seem like she's a normal dog? Does she jump oh, and play? and she's extremely social. Um, She's almost like a person. I mean, she's just really mean. <laughs> but one other item, occasionally when she when she plots is, the very first time it happened, um, we were running, and then it happened, and she actually pooped and piddled both at the same time and yelped. And then she went okay. down. And oh, then goodness. now she doesn't yelp or anything, but after the, I, I call it a uh, anxiety attack, she just plots is, and she does piddle sometimes. Just I think she just loses control. And she doesn't actually lose consciousness or anything of that sort? No, is she kind of with it? It just looks like she's kind of in the twilight zone for about 10 or 15 seconds. Um, very limp. She just, you know, she'll, she'll kind of start going over and sometimes she'll fall over. And then uh, a couple of times her feet have kind of twitched a little bit. Oh, and, goodness. Um, you know, I'd, I'd hate to go put her down because she's such a fun thing, but... Um, you know, I'm just wondering, now, my wife has given her, what is it, melatonin in little bits occasionally to kind of cool her out, like for car rides and stuff like that. Yeah. Because she loves barking at things. <laughs> yeah, well, that's the schnauzer lifestyle is to bark at everything that the wind blows, that is no doubt. Yeah. That's her um, job. Yeah, and I want to kind of back up a little bit and talk about, you know, we talk, you mentioned something, what we call a heart murmur, and and basically when we hear a heart murmur, um, that's basically an abnormal sound that tells us the blood is not flowing in the right direction, kind of almost like swimming against the stream in a, a swimming pool. Um, so we hear an abnormal sound. Now, there are some murmurs that go away when dogs are pups, and that would typically be, be about four to five months. So if she's still got a heart murmur and you're seeing those signs, you know, I would I would agree with them. There, there's something serious going on. Um, from here, there's a couple things that would really help in, in deciding what our options are for her. Um, and one of the big things would be to get an ultrasound on her heart um, because there's a lot of different congenital problems that dogs can be born with um, that cause murmurs. And ultimately, some are definitely more treatable than others, and some are more progressive in, in how bad they make the pet feel. So it's a little hard to say ultimately where you might go without a more specific diagnosis. And I would definitely encourage you, if that's at all possible, get a heart ultrasound because that will really help make that call um, okay. and I've had some some dogs here at my own office that you know I catch that murmur young and we kind of many times we kind of wish it away and, and, and hope that that doesn't create a problem and we really want to jump on that before there's too much of a problem for the pet yeah. um, but but there might be some things at this point you know keeping her comfortable um, there are some medicines that we treat if we're dealing with congestive heart failure. So medicine like um, uh, Lasix, some vasodilators, which treat the effects of the heart failure but aren't going to ultimately... Like diuretic? Or... Yeah, diuretic. That's Lasix, okay. and that's kind of like a water pill. Um, right, my vet had said, you know, in a few years she'll start collecting water in her lungs and her stomach and we'll put her on diuretics, and that'll help yeah. a little bit. But he's a, yeah. he's a country some... doctor and we love him. <laughs> <laughs> so, and that would be the big thing is whether if you have the capability to have a veterinarian do an ultrasound on her, that, that's really the biggest thing. And, you know, if not, you know, there are some of these problems that are slowly progressive and may take a couple of years until, you know, we really have some decreased quality of life. Um, right. You know, but there are some things like, you know, the, the diuretics, um, the vasodilators, which actually kind of 
decrease the volume of blood that the heart is faced with at a given moment, and that can really make a difference as well. So those right. those might be some things to think about. And then, you know, one of the big things we want to do with any heart disease patient is keep them in good, healthy weight. I, I think with what you're describing with her having these problems in these episodes, you know, she is definitely a special needs dog and, you know, make sure everyone in the household prepared for that. And, you know, if at all possible, you know, some of these things are completely treatable. If you have the, the veterinary means around you, um, there are some different procedures. Some are surgical type procedures to help her out. Um, you know, it might not be the particular case for her, but I really think, you know, we'll get a diagnosis and we can tell you a little bit about her where we can go with things. Okay. All right. Well, thanks for the call. Um, we really appreciate it. one 405 8405 Something Worth Saving by Sandy Ward is a touching and funny exploration of family life as told by a highly perceptive and outspoken narrator named Lily, who happens to be a cat. Lily is a fiercely loyal friend to her human. So when things start happening in her family, she's ready to step up and prove that she may be tiny, but she's also mighty. Something Worth Saving will make you a believer in the deep connection between humans and their furry friends. Pick up a copy of Something Worth Saving today everywhere books are sold and visit sandywardbooks.com for more info. This is an Animal Radio News Update. I'm Lori Brooks. The American Kennel Club has honored President George H.W. Bush's service dog, Sully. Remember him? I, I don't think you could ever forget if you mm-hmm. saw President Bush's funeral on TV and, and saw those pictures where Sully actually spent the night next to the casket. But the AKC has given Sully the 2019 AKC Paw of Courage Award in recognition of his loyalty, dedication, and distinguished service. Of course, there are thousands of other great dogs throughout the country. Sully just happened to be famous. But last month, if you aren't keeping up on this, Sully, who is now two and a half years old, he's still so young and has so much to give. He joined the Walter Reed Bethesda Facility Dog Program. His title is now officially Navy Hospital Corpsman Second Class Sully. And uh, there at the facility in Bethesda, he will be providing some interactive care for patients and also training staff. And uh, congratulations to the open-minded folks up in the Vermont town of Fairhaven. They have elected their first animal mayor because they didn't have a human mayor. So what the heck? Let's just have a mayor, they said. So they have elected a three-year-old Nubian goat. His name is Lincoln. And everyone is really excited about Lincoln. Apparently, he's a pretty cute goat. I think goats are adorable, and people love them now. They're making great pets as well. But Lincoln bested a second-place finisher. He beat out a dog named Sammy by only two votes. So to beat a dog has to be a pretty cute goat. And he has aspirations for the United States presidency, too. Uh, You know, maybe, maybe. Right now, his his duties uh, for Lincoln the goat will be, you know, to to be in the Memorial Day Parade, um, you know, things like that, where you just kind of show up and you don't have to have a lot of brain power. Just be cute. Can he tweet yet? Oh, I hope not. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, b- before we go, because I want to say something, because you brought up AKC Awards, and it made me think of something. So the AKC has, in their history, has only given out five leadership awards, okay? Mm. And guess who has gotten one of them? In 2018, Joey, Joey Villani got the AKC Leadership Award for Outstanding Contributions to His Industry. So I figured I'd throw that in there, being that was, the AKC Awards came up. Oh, there wow. I'm so excited. That's, Congratulations. This is, I, it's, That's it's, an honor. I, I'm yeah. sorry That's that I huge. didn't recognize it earlier. Oh, I think I told I think I but I mean, I, I, remember, I remember I told you how, and you just, you know, walked down the hallway um, tussling papers, so... You know, was I on my way to the break down, room yeah. because you know there's fresh donuts in there every morning? <laughs> you might have been. Yes, you might have been. He had donuts on his mind. Joey, that's awesome. Congratulations. Thank I'll you. I'll go grab a donut. Bring one back for me too, okay? For all of us, you can get more breaking animal news anytime at animalradio.com. This has been an Animal Radio news update. Get more at animalradio.com. Check out Animal Radio highlights. All the good stuff without the blah, blah, blah. Browse on over to animalradio.pet. It's Animal Radio celebrating the connection with our pets. 
and no stranger to Animal Radio, albeit 12 years ago. We welcome back Mark Beckoff. He is a professor emeritus at the uh, University of Colorado. Welcome back. How are you doing? I'm doing great. It's good to be with you. Thanks for having me on your lovely show. You have a brand new book out. It's called Unleashing Your Dog. <laughs> and, you know, you, with the press release, there come some suggested questions I've, I've always bucked authority, so I uh, I have some questions that kind of go off script here, uh, most, right. mostly because you focus on the behavior and the psychology behind canines, dogs. And mm-hmm. I want to know, does my dog really love me, or has he learned to do things that look like love, but really it comes down to, to food? Oh, I think your dog loves you, although I don't know the relationship, but... Um... You know, there's a lot of theories out there that dogs use us for food and for cuddling and for getting to the dog park or whatever. And I don't believe that at all. I mean, I think it's all part of the very positive and long-term relationships we build with our canine companions. So even though I don't know you or your dog, I'll wager that your dog loves you. You know, my dog, especially after I give her a bath, you know, we go outside and she'll find a dead worm or something to roll in. Am I doing her a disservice by not allowing her to roll in these oh, dead that's gross. worms? I know it's gross, and I don't like <laughs> yeah. it. I don't know why she does it, but, um, I mean, should I let her, or is that just <coughs> disgusting? Well, part of the unleashing paradigm is to let her. I mean, I fully understand that dogs will roll in um, things that are terribly offensive to us and that sometimes, you know, we just have to stop them, but they like to roll. And so I say, let them roll to their heart's content. And then there's going to be times when it's not appropriate. So if I were out with my dog and they were running, I lived in the mountains outside of Boulder and they rolled in some putrid stuff, then they had a big outdoor run, and they would stay there until the um, odor dissipated. But if I knew I was going to town with them, I would frankly stop them from rolling and put them in the car. And to be honest with you, I don't think they suffered from any psychological disorder because I stopped them from rolling on occasion. So this is kind of the concept of the book, isn't it? That you're unleashing your dog, allowing your dog to do things that normally wouldn't be appropriate for humans? Yeah, I mean, well, not only not not only that, but I mean, unleashing really meaning <laughs> letting them be dogs and giving them as much freedom as possible. And one of the messages is that even when a dog is being walked on a leash or some kind of tether, you can unleash them by letting them sniff as much as they want. And part of the unleashing um, regime, if you will, is that even if they're on a leash, the walk is for them. So let them sniff and You know, they'll learn at some point that you only have 15 or 20 minutes or a half hour, but unleashing means giving them agency or giving them control and um, giving them the ability to make choices and to let them be a dog. Okay, so letting them sniff, what are some other easy ways to unleash our dog? Well, another, of course, is if you go to a dog park and your dog likes the dog park as well... um, just let them romp with their friends. Um, one bottom line message is to become fluent in dog or dog literate. And that means that you understand that when they're playing roughly, it's not necessarily going to change, um, you know, escalate into a fight. And in fact, rough play escalates into serious fighting less than 1% of the time. So it means letting them interact with their friends. It means letting them roll letting them taste certain things that we all find utterly um, off-putting. But unleashing also refers to understanding um, how their senses work. The whole book is built around the five senses. So it really means understanding a dog and understanding dogs as individuals. Do they like loud music? Do they not like loud music? you know, we stress that we shouldn't be pouring perfumes and deodorants all over them because they like their own doggy smells, for example. What about dressing them up in doggy shorts? <laughs> this is something we were just talking about. Uh, I, you know, the, the ladies love dressing their animals up, but I, I cannot I do. do it. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't, you know, my, my take is if it doesn't harm them 
and you know, and it makes the human feel good and it improves the relationship with the dog, then that's okay. I mean, the thank dogs, you, thank you the, so much. Well, well, that's part that's part of unleashing the human. Um, you know, I think that. <laughs> If it doesn't harm them, it doesn't restrict their movements, if it doesn't smell from some, you know, a detergent, then it's okay. The bottom line is they don't care. You know, they don't care if their nails are painted. They don't care if they you put shorts on them as long as it doesn't restrict their movement and the shorts are pink, green, or paisley or tie-dye. Would I do I do it to my dogs? No. Do I think it's bad for the dogs? No, not necessarily, but it just people need to understand that their dogs don't really care. Mm. Yeah, there's some dogs you can tell if your dog enjoys it or doesn't like it. I mean, the dog will try to get yeah. it off if they're uncomfortable. But if your dog, my dog gets very excited when she sees well, me she, coming. Well, she believes she's the center of attention, which she is. Oh, and she exactly. struts it. She knows she's got something <laughs> special. That's exactly what I was going to say is you're giving them attention. They feel the love. And it's okay, you know, this sounds so silly to say, but it's far better than, you know, yelling at them or telling them no all the time. Sure. So, you know, so so there are certain things that people do, like, you know, dressing their dogs up. You know, if it works for both of them, that's fine. And, and you know, another bottom line message of the book is that the relationship is one of mutual tolerance, uh, reciprocal respect and trust, if you will. And that we're always negotiating with our dogs. And so the main message is whatever you do has to be good for them and us. And sometimes I find myself airing that, well, I may not want to do this, but they love to do it. So what the heck? The rest of their time, they're captive. And, you know, that's another underlying theme, not in a negative sense, but... You know, we tell them when they can eat, who they can play with, what they can eat, when they can poop and pee and go outside and get exercise. So freeing them up, unleashing them really is the way to give them the most freedom possible in a human oriented world. Hey, Mark, we got to take a quick break. So hang tight for one second. We'll be right back with Mark Beckoff. That's my dog, Annie. She's healthy now, but recently she broke her leg and I had to rush her to the vet. Thankfully, she's protected by Embrace Pet Insurance. They covered her surgery and reimbursed the claim quickly. Embrace offers one simple plan for unexpected accidents and illnesses that you can personalize to fit your budget. To learn more, visit EmbracePetInsurance.com to get a free quote. Policies underwritten by a licensed insurer of American Modern Insurance Group. Coverage subject to policy terms and conditions. Visit EmbracePetInsurance.com for coverage details. The Black Cloud Sound Dot AF1 headsets have a built-in FM receiver with dual dynamic drivers and customizable EQ and sound effect settings. They're capable of delivering beautiful sound. You can also tune directly to any FM radio station without internet access. Visit www.blackloud.com. Create your account and order Sound.AF1 by inputting the radio station coupon code Animal Radio to get the special 10% off discount. Oh, what did he say? He said, we're all across the USA, the most listened to pet show today. Animal Radio, we're everywhere you go. Animal Radio. Animal Radio. Live at the Red Barn Studios, you're listening to Animal Radio. Here's Hal and Judy. Hey, you lucky dog, it's Animal Radio. We are with Mark Beckoff. He's Professor Emeritus of Ecology and Evolutionary Biology at the University of Colorado. Wow, that's a mouthful there. And his latest book is called Unleashing Your Dog, a field guide to giving your canine companion the best life possible. But when you talk about unleashing, it's more metaphorical. Yeah, it's called a loose leash. A loose leash. A loose leash, yes. Because yeah. A lot of people, they'll take their dog out, they see him poop, and they just pull him back in. They don't realize that, I guess, the sniffing around is like a Facebook for us. You know, yeah, we call, yeah, we call it P-mail or poop mail. P-mail, um, okay. Right. I mean, no, you're absolutely right. It is a metaphor. And, and what it does is it really generates a lot of conversation. So when I was talking to a few people a couple of weeks ago at one of the local dog parks, that's when I came up with this phrase that you can unleash a leashed dog. 
And we got into a long discussion. And of course, a lot of it focused on um, allowing them to sniff when they're on a leash, allowing them to stop and wiggle their ears or, you know, move their head because they likely hear something that we don't hear. So that's exactly what it is about. And it once again, all boils down to giving our dogs the most freedoms that they can possibly have in the situation in which they live. An incredible book. Once again, Unleashing Your Dog, A Field Guide to Giving Your Canine Companion the Best Life Possible. Mark Beckoff joining us. Thank you so much for spending time with us today. My pleasure, and I hope all the dogs benefit from it. Absolutely. In fact, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make sure that 10 right now benefit from this. one 405 8405 if you'd like to pick up the book, Unleashing Your Dog. If you're not lucky enough to get on through, head on over to Amazon.com or your favorite bookstore, if it still exists, and ask for it. Okay? It's Unleashing Your Dog, A Field Guide to Giving Your Canine Companion the Best Life Possible, and Mark Beckoff, the author on that. After the show, I'm going to let Ladybug go roll in that dead worm outside. Oh, jeez. Lovely. Thank you. <laughs> Hi, it's Alan Cable. You know, dogs are dogs and people are people. I work with two folks this week. Each of them had the same problem. Their dog basically tries to rip their shoulder off at the end of a leash. And the guy I was working with, he let the dog off the leash. What do you think the dog did? Started jumping on him, grabbing the leash with his teeth. Pretty disrespectful behavior, wouldn't you say? You might not. But if that dog were part of a dog pack and did that to the alpha, he'd get a smackdown. Not with words or conversation like people do, but with swift action, a swift correction. A lot of people refuse to accept that their dog's a dog. They pretend the dogs are human. They think he understands everything they're saying and that he likes everything that humans like. Here's an example. Who doesn't love a hug? I'll tell you who. Most dogs. A hug is threatening to most dogs. They'll put up with it from their human pack members. But when a stranger does it, it signals domination and an invasion of space. It makes a dog feel threatened. We communicate with words. But if you really want to understand your dog or any dog, you have to watch their body language, their eyes, and what they do when you and other people are around. They learn by observing us. For instance, let's say you had a rug in your kitchen, and the only time you gave your dog a treat is when he was on this rug. You'll notice the dog connects the dots. He figures out that when he's in that place, he gets a treat. So, every time you walk in the room, you'll notice your dog moves to that spot. He even stays in that spot when you're not in the room. This is a cool way to train your dog to do lots of stuff. You're rewarding him for something he's already doing that you like. Then take it a step further. If he's not on the rug, point at it. If he doesn't move, you, while pointing at the rug, start moving towards it. You can use the word treat repeatedly, too. If he's still not moving, get a treat and hold it in your hand while still pointing at the rug and moving towards it. Trust me, your dog's going to get the message, and pretty soon you'll be able to point to get him to go wherever you want him to. People will be fascinated how your dog will do what you want him to without ever saying a word. The greatest thing you can do for your dog is to be a strong pack leader and give him structure. He'll be calm and happy for it. Oh, sounds like Diesel wants to get on out of here. He started this new thing of, um, of crying about 3.30 or 4 in the morning. Oh, no. I had to poop! I had to poop! Because... <laughs> He's not allowed in the bed because he guards me in the bed. He guards so he you? Has to... Oh, yeah. Yeah, he's um, he's pretty funny. <laughs> so you have to take him outside he, he... at 3 in the morning? Um, that's what he's he's been starting to do. So, yeah. yeah. He still doesn't have a... So do you comply with that? Routine. I think was yeah. the question. Yeah. Do you comply with that 3 a.m. request? I did for the first two days. And did and, he poop? And then I ended up staying up for another three days until 3 a.m., making sure that he pooped before I finally got to bed. But then I didn't get to go to sleep until like 3.30 in the morning. Um, but you have to be consistent, and we're just not consistent yet. Ah, uh, okay. Last night was another, Mom, I had to poop! <laughs> and and then he claw, you know, at the baby gate and make a noise and stuff. So he just wants attention. Sure. And it's hard to deny him that. But um, I don't want to set up a pattern for the entire future of the rest of my life, so... Ask me That's next a, sli- week, a slippery slope. There. <laughs> yeah. Slippery slope. Well, let's let's go take Diesel for a walk right now in Ladybug Two, and you grab your animal, take him for a walk. 
Uh, remember, if you need your fix during the week, you can visit us over at animalradio.pet. And if you happen to have a Yorkshire Terrier, a Shih Tzu, a Pug, or Mini Schnauzer, check out Dr. Debbie's books, How to Be Your Dog's Best Friend. They are Kindle Reads, and we have links over at animalradio.pet. In fact, we have links to everything you've heard on today's show over at animalradio.pet. We'll see you next week for more Animal Radio right here. And I just wanted to let you know, I'm glad that we proved that Ladybug really does love me, Hal. Now you know she really does love me. See you next week. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. This is Animal Radio Network.